Yo, what up? This is D-Night, and you're listening to the Pardon the Interaction podcast. My, oh, my, we've had so much going on. Uh, for starters, in case you missed it, we've got a new addition to the Par and Pie family, Tara Dublin. Make sure you go follow her on Twitter at Tara Dublin Rocks. Also, pick up a copy of her book while you're at it. Make, make her day, The Sound of Settling. A very fun and interesting read compared to the things we talk about on this podcast. <laughs> But yeah, we're heading toward the do or die time for the 2024 election. Go ahead and hit up JoeBiden.com. Get that man like a dollar a month or something. Help his campaign staff up and get prepared to try and save our democracy. And make sure to grab like one other person you know and tell them about the podcast. Make sure they subscribe and tune in every single week. We got a lot of things coming up for you this year. We need all the support that we can get. So if you do your part and help us grow our audience, we'll do our part and help elect Joe Biden in 2024 and save American democracy. And this is the Part of the Interaction Podcast. Sorry, start over. Yeah, that's okay. Oh, what in 2015, we were in Thailand, Evan and I, and we were observing like the prostitute culture. <laughs> so, you don't just... It's more romantic than it is here. Well, I don't know about romance, but you have to buy them a meal. Yeah, and... well, there's flirtation involved. Okay. All right. I don't know about the flirtation, but I definitely would see them at restaurants. <laughs> they had to be. You have to buy them. You have to feed them. Or that's what I'm led to understand. That's the- um, oh. and then I, I remember seeing one place, this couple, quote unquote, mm. leaving a restaurant. And this woman had like two bags of to-go food. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, no, you are a you're a three male guy. Um, well, I mean, doesn't that sound more romantic than America's version of prostitution, where you just throw money at the hoe after she's done? She Look, I want hookers at the point, like so I know what goes on in those yeah. those alleys. They don't they don't get cash up front. Cash up front. Okay, look, I don't know how I, I don't know how prostitution works. I don't solicit. That's not my area of expertise. You know what? I wonder, I think, you know, I wonder who, if they do now, that would be smart though. You know, you got to Chris Kais it. Look. I, w- I would need it. cash up front. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. That's fair. Oh man. I don't want to ruin the mood, but ruin the mood, but fuck you, baby. Well, you know, if this whole podcasting thing doesn't work out, I guess there's like a new business opportunity for me. Hey, this is D Knight. This is Carol. It's just time. And you're listening to the Part of the Insurrection podcast, where we cover the January 6th committee hearing about the insurrection days later because <laughs> uh, apparently everyone loves hearing late, late news. And <laughs> by late, I mean it's not timely. <laughs> hey, you know, John Oliver takes a whole entire week, can't we? Can't we? I mean, I guess we well, of course we're we not. To- uh, we have to be as funny as John Oliver. Oh yeah, we're out of luck on in that department. <laughs> we're trying. Now. Do we want to discuss the hearings or not? <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there one day. We just don't have the charming, delightful British accent to go along with our snark. Wait, I don't. <laughs> I knew that about my ex fiance. Oh, it's British. The accent. Oh, so sad. Ty, you have a wonderful life of past lovers that I, we just have to delve into one day. I, I have, that was just like a year and a half ago. I have a freaking $1,300 Justin Alexander dress hanging in my closet. It's black and cream. It's amazing. Strapless. All right. Oh. You'll have to model that for us on the Twitter feed soon. It is uh, so nice. Oh, uh, not oh. tonight. You have your uh, black girl. Uh, head tie on so we'll save that for when your hair is done up but next time though <laughs> he's saving when your hair is done up okay on it though yeah i'm an old woman i'll admit it <laughs> i i am all right kids uh it's time for our top five takeaways from the january 6th committee's final hearing the season finale uh, who would like to go first uh carol you would, would you like was, to was that really the season finale because my one of my first takeaways was that uh rep aguilar was saying they were going to continue looking into potential obstruction 
part of the committee. Okay, as far as the televised aspect of the January 6th committee hearings, uh, yeah, that's probably it. I mean, unless by some miracle, actually, it's it, it's looking more and more likely that we'll keep the House. But uh, should we keep the House? Maybe. Uh, and, and after mm-hmm. that, they'll continue holding public hearings. But uh, should Republicans take the House, that committee will be disbanded. Um. <laughs> So that'll be the end of the public hearings. If if that's not motivation we have for you people January. to get out and vote. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I thought that at least try to squeeze one more in. I think they're leaving room because they do kind of like the one that we just had. They just they were like, yo, catch us in four days. You know, and that was so yeah. I think if they get something they think needs to be because they're it's not lost on them that we're up against the clock. So I think if they get something that they think is a bombshell, that they're going to to get it in before they're ousted, even if it's after the election, it'll be still something that's in the minds of the American people, I think. For sure. Uh, But also they want to get their paperwork done. They want to get their report out, give or take by Christmas, you know, just in case things go sideways in the midterm elections, they want to make sure they have. Uh, all the information and evidence documented that they need to get out to the public and they may or may not have time to. And I guess they're all still running their own campaigns and they have to win them. Yeah. Except for Cheney and Kinzinger. Well, not not only that, but yeah, but bringing that up, um, Cheney and Kinzinger, if, even if Dems hold the house, they're not going to be on the committee. And Cheney has been one of the strongest members of the committee. Like she really did set the tone from the beginning, you know? Um, Yeah. Well, I think that was the role the committee intended for her to play is to set the tone. Yeah. Uh, And, you know, she's not there for us, for you, I, and the democratic voters out there. She is there to be the, the voice of Republicans for reason, right? She's a, she's basically a stand in for what the Republican party used to be which is uh, mildly responsible and somewhat concerned with national security. We do war crimes, but we keep a nice mask for our war. Okay, I didn't yeah, think that through, uh, but... well, uh, <laughs> not inaccurate. Uh, they, they, they used to pretend to care about things like democracy and well, they just, dis- well, America destabilized the world and now itself. So here we are. That we are the countries that, it's karma, full circle. That it is. All right, number five. Who wants to go first? I should have worked this out in advance. Did I not just go first? That was my, yeah, number. That was my oh, first one. My bad. I'm sorry, homie. Number five. Ty, your turn. I am very happy that POTUS fired Secret Service because knowing how complicit some of them were, just reading some of the language in their communications... Oh man, it's so bad. It, well, it, I was just floored. You know, I've always had respect for institutions and we've had how many transfers from one party to another over the decades, but never was there like a, a feeling of these people aren't patriots and aren't going to do their job and put, you know, it's it's insane. And they were in positions of power and knowing Oh, how much they knew and when it's that is rough. Like there was an email from the Secret Service about oh, well, how pissed Trump was when he uh, fucking lost at the Supreme Court. He was like, oh, no, they didn't take up my case. Fuck this shit. And he was losing his mind and the Secret Service knew about it. And they was like, oh, well, what do you do? Wait, saying that, do you know what I think is that's been completely overlooked? It stood out to me. What would that be? On the tape with Nancy Pelosi, when she was, when her chief of staff told her Trump wanted to come to the Capitol, he's not coming, like that whole thing. And she's like, I want him to come. I'll punch him in the face. The first thing in my mind when I heard her chief of staff was she literally just corroborated everything that Cassidy Hutchison said about Trump wanting to go to the Capitol and having the fight with the Secret Service. Yeah, Why she did. has that not been? Well, I think the committee's working on um, getting some testimony from some certain Secret Service agents about but, that whole entire incident. 
But I mean, like in the media, to me, that's huge because people tried to dismiss her, deride her. That never happened, even Ornato. But here we have independent corroboration that Trump was intending to go to the Capitol. So that puts everything oh, yeah. that like that for me is the that part. She it's was like, so livid, too. She was looking like oh, <laughs> he bet not bring his ass up here. Like that's see what I happens. Feel like, I feel like that's a total vindication for Cassidy Hutchinson. It is on her on her testimony. Speaking of Cassidy Hutch- Hutchinson, um, she was also <laughs> like, what was the quote uh, about wait, Trump's D five? Oh wait, but like this. this <laughs> oh, that wasn't it. No, oh, I thought okay. No, sorry, I, I get to the secret Bye, service guys. later. <laughs> no, but yeah, <laughs> no, Cassidy Hutchinson saying uh, Trump didn't want people that know they lost the election like oh well that's that's fucking revealing information there so he knew he lost and he was telling mark meadows hey we can't let the people know we lost we gotta fucking pretend like it was stolen like i mean and uh, yes, uh, yeah. well that does actually tie into my number five take away from the january 6th committee hearing uh, uh how premeditated all of this was uh trump knew in the summer of 20 or yeah 2020 that if he lost, he was just going to claim it was rigged and try and find a way to steal the election back. Like, they, they knew months in advance. Months in advance. Yep. They had it all plotted out. It wasn't something that evolved organically over time or, you know, once they lost the election, it was like, oh, no, this is part of the plan. Even Roger Stone himself was like, uh, fuck the voting. Let's get straight to the violence. Rather, rather incriminating statement there, sir, uh, especially when there was immediately violence thereafter immediately thereafter uh yep that that would be my number five takeaway all right number four uh carol after you this this ties right into yours uh Sweet. For, in terms of the premeditation there you had uh, cold sores bannon impetigo bannon that's his name sorry <laughs> uh, <laughs> thing before the election you know if if he if he if Biden somehow pulls ahead, you know, well, he'll just declare victory that night. That's when it'll get crazy. And you had Mike Pence's lawyer. Uh, also, was it Greg Jacob? Yeah. Also saying Trump was already planning to declare victory on election night, uh, reg- you know, prior to the election results being known. Uh, so, yeah. That's premeditation. Yeah. Yes, it is. All right. Tie four. Tie number four. Take away from the January 6th hearing. Okay, can we talk about what a fucking asshole Steve Scalise is? Because this oh, motherfucker. This okay? motherfucker here, y'all. This motherfucker. God <laughs> damn this dude. Hey, you know what? I had a shithole <laughs> of the week war coming later <laughs> with somebody else. But now that I think about it, Steve Scalise might get it. Um, anyway, continue. Sorry. Back to you, Ty. Yeah. This fucker was right fucking there. Staring at Nancy Pelosi. Steve Scalise, that ratty ass motherfucker. (laughs) Fuck his ass. Fuck him. Trying to talk shit about Nancy Pelosi. Fuck him. He's one of the motherfuckers who's been like, oh, why didn't Nancy Pelosi call for help? Why, Why didn't she try and get the National Guard there? Bitch, you was right there standing at her on the phone the whole time. She was trying to get the National Guard and the police there. Oh, my God. I hope he gets... Uh, never mind. I won't say that. I don't want to get canceled. What would you say about someone who was there on January 6th fighting for their lives and then turned around and lied about the people who were actually doing the helping? Like people defending the Capitol? Yes. Um, I'd say, like... What would you like say about him? The nasty things. Because why would you like switch sides? It's like yeah, it's stupid. Exactly. Like if it's red versus blue, you can't just be red and get blue. You can't do that. No, that it's makes because sense. he's a two-faced lying piece of ass. A donkey. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm gonna go Samuel L. Oh. Jackson. He deserves to die, and I hope he burns in hell. <laughs> Okay, did I that, do that would right? be very good. Yeah, he has it coming. I love you. I love you too, buddy. 
And you know, he almost got away with it too, because um, I couldn't pick that guy out of a lineup of one. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, he's not that generic no, looking. No, he is. He he's a, is Derek. Okay. He's, he's a very generic looking NPC white person. <laughs> lineup sorry. of one. <laughs> uh, yeah. Every middle-aged white dude looks like Steve Scalise. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're, you're so right about that. All right, my my number four takeaway from the January sixth no, committee hearing. We just did four. No, this is mine. Oh, yeah. Let me let me get mine, and you know, because I have to, I have to talk and ramble and, and go off on tangents. Um, my number four takeaway is uh, that there are so many amendments in the Constitution, but <laughs> you can only choose one, and <laughs> so many of these witnesses. And the J6 committee investigation chose the fifth. <laughs> Let me say it again. Fifth. How many amendments are in the Constitution? I don't know. But when they you get to five, they stopped at five. Yeah. Was, <laughs> was it like, was it 30 of them or so? Like 30, 30 people, 30 individuals invoking their Fifth Amendment right not to incriminate themselves in an investigation about overthrowing the government? I mean, I've seen. That seems uh, fairly precarious. Maybe you should, I don't know, say, hey, I had no intentions of overthrowing the government. Or, hey, I had no intentions of assassinating Mike Pence. I mean, how hard is that? It doesn't seem <laughs> like a high bar to me. And yet, they were like, and yet they were like, oh, you know what? I actually don't want to incriminate myself. That, that, that seems rather scandalous. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like that was a pretty important takeaway that no, no one made. I mean, it, more should have been made of that. But alas, here we are. All right, number th- number three. Take away, Carol. Um, oh. So yeah, I liked just, I, I know we already talked about Nancy and her uh, calmness and composure, but I just, I loved seeing her in action. take charge. Like yeah, she was in action. Boss. She was calm and decisive. Um in a crisis and it just made me think of all the the men who were there freaking out like your josh running holly away um <laughs> hauling holly hauling ass holly <laughs> yeah and it's just makes me think like yeah josh holly geez. was running like josh allen it's crazy well it just makes me think men are too emotional to be in politics <laughs> so, i see what you did there hashtag, hashtag- girl boss uh, Nancy Pelosi, you go, girl. You're doing it up. Ah, yeah. Credit, credit to the woman for keeping her cool in in a situation where she's under attack by a violent mob. I've never seen anything like that. Uh, oh, and also to the motherfuckers out there, like, oh, like it, it seems mighty suspicious that Nancy Pelosi had her her family there to document the entire experience. Uh, yeah. Well, Mike Pence's family was there. You don't mention them fuckers. Exactly. Exactly. Like, her her daughter is a documentarian. That's she she makes films. She was just like, oh, I'm going to show up. It, it'll be a historic moment. I'll cut the camera on, and the next thing you know, it's a fucking violent coup. If she's got a camera, why wouldn't she capture that for history? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. But I, I like how that you know they're as though everyone doesn't carry around this very high quality video camera on their person at all time. Call I am currently phone. holding up an iPhone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm an Android, Android guy. guy. Uh, what? Oh, that was my kids, but um, uh, yeah, it's pretty. You know, based on my very limited anecdotal experience, I've been to the Capitol once, and you know who I saw when I was there? Nancy Pelosi's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like she's, she's works there. there. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Yeah, well, there goes that conspiracy theory down the drain. All right, number four takeaway from the January 6th committee. No, here in that you was just, three. Yes, uh, and you just skipped my three. Number three. Number three. To, I'm sorry, math is hard, even though it's really just counting in this case. I can't if only down, someone but. who is doing, who is naked and uh, Taiwanese could teach us. <laughs> I, all right. That's an inside joke that like only two people will get. And, and they're also the co host Three of the people. Oh, uh, he, he doesn't listen to this. He doesn't there are three know. Of us. Yeah. But I mean, the other, the, 
<laughs> only a spoon. You made the joke, and only the other two of us will get it. Anyway, number three, Ty. I get it. <laughs> I'm a person. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Okay, I know. I know. Is- e- er, okay. I know. Uh, Kanye right, and Ty. Trump are out here trying to erase the Jewish people, but you exist, Carol. Mm. I'm sorry. All right, you're a person again. Okay. Number three. Okay, continue. Okay. So when she was on the phone with Ralph Northam, the governor of Virginia, and Larry Hogan. Yes. Trying to figure out if they could send theirs, but then at the same time, like... National Guard. Do we need his... Well, yeah, their National Guard, and then like, oh, shit. Do we need permission? So that's not going to work, because he's trying to kill us all, you know? But... When she was being drugged for filth by the right, saying that she didn't, neither one of them stepped up to her defense. That was a, that was, that stuck with me. And I go. That is such a good takeaway that the people she was on the phone with that knew that she was the one trying to organize the defense for the Capitol didn't say a goddamn word. You know what? They might get the fucking shithole of the week award. <laughs> Dirty fuckers. <laughs> fucking bad. I, I know Nancy would be like, them freaking buttheads. And she is too a class <laughs> actor. She never, but they sat there. Yeah. And there, and didn't say a month. So that was my. So am I the only one that got? Okay. I brought north of dirty ass. I brought this takeaway to light. I will take full credit for that. Yeah, them bastards. That was really good, Ty. All right, number three for me. Uh, I would say, just bigger picture, uh, the January 6th committee's effectiveness in this matter has been superb. Like, I, I know they couldn't tackle every possible problem that the committee needed to address. They had, there was a trade-off. It, do they want to uncover everything? Do they want to talk about every topic in public? I mean, I'm sure they do. Do we have enough time for that? No. I mean, this would take years of work to get to the bottom of everything. And in like the trade-off for the narrow focus is that at least they nailed Trump. Like it was, it's not going to convince anyone who's already made their mind up about January 6th or the Republican party or Trump in general for that matter. But what it did was definitely put this back in the forefront of everyone's minds. Like, I know we say this about 9-11 all the time. Never forget. Uh, well, the January 6th committee did a very fantastic job of making sure the public didn't forget about January 6th. All right. Number two, Carol, go. Oh, man, that was kind of a conclusory one. And now mine is like, well, I have I, more. I mean, hey, I, I'm normal. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, one of my takeaways is how petty and vengeful and spiteful Trump is. I'm um, just learning that he he gave orders uh, to pull troops like uh, abruptly out of Afghanistan January 15th, 2021, like a couple days after he lost the election or that he found out that he, you know, realized he lost the election. It's just like, man, it's not just messing with your political rival it's not like you know when they used to have the white house transitions and like the staff would leave like a joke note for the other staff or like right. take the chairs or something it's like haha i'm gonna yeah. destroy the I world fuck you super Cute glue they, he didn't just like put super glue on the seed or something or like piss on the toothbrush or whatever kids do these days he's like no i'm going to sabotage like our geopolitical position in the world by removing all of our troops from these highly contested areas across like what the fuck it's like won't it be hilarious when i destroy these people's lives yeah I, 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 it's, it's insane i mean i feel like he was on orders from putin in that regard it's like hey bitch you lost burn everything down on the way out what's really incredible is that no one in the military listened to him they was like bitch you crazy Psh, get out of here with that like it's almost as if they knew <laughs> that he wasn't really the president and they weren't going to take any of his orders seriously. 
which is a whole nother problem. Like, I, I guess we shouldn't be in a situation where we have to have a military that disregards orders from the sitting president of the United States. I mean, we should be in a position where we elect responsible individuals. But, you know, given the circumstances, I'm glad they didn't listen. I mean, I can't imagine all like they, they complain about the way Biden withdrew our troops from Afghanistan, which is, you know, a, a scenario uh, that was created by Trump in the first place. But like, imagine if we had to do all of that in in two months instead of the eight months that it took. To, uh, yeah. Well, job. is it possible? I mean, there was there was a good chunk of intervening time between when he gave the order and January 15th. It's possible, you know, instead of just, quote, not listening to him, you know, they had a couple months to talk about of it or like after January 6th, they were able to be like your legacy is fucked and like you cannot do this right now no that was just like nah ho we're not doing it uh let's see let's... <laughs> number two tiger <laughs> well d knight said so so that's conclusive <laughs> well i mean they ignored his or they were they were just a man like, has spoken well they were like can we get that in writing and they got it in writing and they were still like nah son uh oh, number two take away oh. from the last hearing ty after you I don't know if I have a number two because I think we kind of hit everything that I took away. Just make some shit. Okay, I'm willing to reiterate some things. Number two, Secret Service. You fucking shitbags. You sorry, no good, lame ass, fucking loser ass, pieces of shit. Uh, I forgot. I remember that time you came to my house. I remember that shit. I remember you can, that. You can show up at my place over a fucking tweet but you can't fucking try and say the fucking legislative branch of the United States, even though you had plenty of information days, weeks in advance that there was, a, they were planning a fucking massive attack on the Capitol. Podcast, I'd like to say. I ain't forgot. I remember, I think about it all the time. You fucking sorry ass losers. And that's why I light your bitch asses up on Twitter. I hope you're listening to the podcast, please like, and subscribe. <laughs> uh, give us five stars. If you, if you don't, you're a hater. Um, yeah. All right. Number one takeaway, Carol. Go. After. The only one I have left on my totally uh, impromptu list is, <laughs> is also about the Secret Service. I was surprised to hear that they go through any of these lengths for Trump because I remember like after the election, people are like, what if the Secret Service helps him do a coup? And I was like, no, they must fucking hate him. Like he keeps giving them all COVID. <laughs> like, <laughs> like he has zero regard for their like their health or safety. And it, like, it seemed like they all hated him, but I guess you don't need that many guys. Okay, it's funny you brought that up. <laughs> it's funny you brought that up because I just now remember that time where like 300 of them had COVID. Uh, like within like a couple of months of each other because he kept going to those fucking dumbass rallies in the middle of a global pandemic before we had a vaccine. That was wild. We were like, oh, that seems like a, a fucking national, a fatal national security flaw. You don't have any active Secret Service members left because they all have the fucking disease. That's that's not ideal. Not ideal. I mean, I guess maybe it would have been uh, a perfect opportunity for someone to take advantage of, of that matter. We won't say how. Um, because I don't want the Secret Service showing up to my house again. Because I I know you're listening. You 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 listen. I know you do. You stood by and let this dude fucking spread COVID around the whole country with his stupid rallies. Not you. And, and then charge <laughs> you like fifteen hundred dollars a night for a crappy ass Motel Six room at his Trump properties. Like I'm convinced that he personally spread COVID like to the whole country <laughs> like not not just his bad policies and how it in theory sets a bad example for him to be holding super spreader events but in in the physical act of transmission of the of the viral particles through the air at his rallies i think he is like patient zero <laughs> like he caused the delta he caused the omicron <laughs> this is the fucking next one that's coming this the is trump this. variant hey yeah you know what like he really did purposely go around trying to spread COVID because like in public, he would be like, Oh yeah. Who gives a fuck? What's a mask? Blah, blah, blah. And then in private, he'd be like, stay the fuck away from me. Everyone's getting tested. Y'all motherfuckers can't get six feet close to me. Like he was serious about the shit. In pro and, and I think that's because he had the intention of giving it to as many people as possible. 
Hey, remember when he tried to kill um, our president, yes. President Biden, by giving oh, him COVID man. at a debate, knowing oh. he had COVID, show, I mean, refusing to take a test? Man. And then they showed up at the last minute. And- I'm not entirely convinced that, like, Putin didn't order him to, like, inject himself with COVID and then go to the debate and try and give it to Biden like a fucking bioweapon. Oh. I think that's what I don't think he contracted it on accident. He was like, yeah, give me some of that sweet COVID. <laughs> he was, like making out with one of the Secret Service agents or somebody in his fucking uh, White, White House staffer that had it. And then he went Putin to the said a young lady to piss COVID all over him. Oh, I don't think Putin was sending any young ladies to the White House. Uh, maybe in, in the hotel in Moscow in his trip there. Yeah, for the the Trump Miss Universe pageant, rather. Uh, yeah, I don't think he was sending any hoes to the White House. Although, I feel like we should have, like, a service for that. Like, I, it's, I, don't think, I don't think America is in a good place when its president can't get laid. Like, that seems like it's bad for the country. Oh. Uh, I, don't, I don't want a sitting president of the United States, uh, you know, being uh, horny or hangry. Like, get that man some food, even though, it, in Trump's case, we hate him. Get that man some food. Get that man some ass. Like, have his mind clear so he ain't out here making no bad decisions for the rest of us. All right. Number one takeaway from the January 6th committee for me. Um, it's not over yet. Uh, the committee might be done with its public-facing work as far as televised hearings are concerned. And, of course, they have the, the report, the final report coming sometime around Christmas. But bigger picture, like, this just scratched the surface. Again, it was narrowly tailored to uh, basically hold Trump in his immediate circle accountable. This was not intended to uncover all the wrongdoing uh, and all the conspiring that went on on and before January 6th. And we can't we also can't rely not only on this committee, but Congress in general to save us. Like we have to do the work. Like if, if you want Congress to play a part, vote blue. Convince someone else to vote for Democrats. Make sure they vote up and down the ballot. Um, Also, keep in mind that state legislatures will be able to play a part in the 2024 election. And your chance to influence that before it happens is right now in these midterms. But even bigger than that, we also can't simply rely on the Justice Department to clean up our mess. Like, we are all partly responsible for this in some shape, form, or fashion. Uh, Whether it's because we didn't vote in you know, 2020 or 2018 or in some of these local elections or in some of these statewide races um, or, or, or for Jill Stein <laughs> <laughs> I, or, or you can go back further that we didn't like stomp out racism and fascism in this country a long time ago, that we didn't all do our part to try and convince someone uh, that America should be better. And then we individually should do better. And as a whole, we should do better. But it's up to us at the end of the day, and and which is part of the reason why we're doing this podcast here, because we can't count on anyone else to fix these problems if we're not willing to do the work ourselves. So here we are. Yeah. All right. So do each of you have a shithole of the week award? Uh, Are there any deserving candidates out there, uh, apart from the obvious Steve Scalise for being an asshole? Uh, sitting there watching Nancy Pelosi try and do some shit while he was just being a little bitch asshole. Uh, other than him, I, I nominate Ron Johnson for saying the FBI framed framed him to make him look like a fucking conspiracy or rather co-conspirator with Russia. Yeah, uh, no, nah, bro. The FBI didn't make you look like an asset. You are an asset. Carol? I'm, I'm just going to go with Ron. I'm going to go with the entire Secret Service. Oh, yeah, there's some fucking assholes. Secret Service it is. You win, you win the award. I'll send you a fucking trophy. Actually, you know where I live. You can come pick it up yourselves. This is a real literal trophy and not a threat trophy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I guess I should. But you're going to have to share it. Uh, let me elaborate. <laughs> That's an actual trophy that you're getting, guys. That's not some veiled threat. I, I don't want you to come arrest me and try me in some kind of military tribunal. Um, and yeah, 
We don't need that. You wouldn't get a trial. Oh, man, I know I'm black. They throw my ass straight in jail. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. All right. Do either of you have any closing thoughts for the evening? Come on, kids. We do this every time. (laughs) There's always closing thoughts. Not that you have to have any. I just, it just went by so fast. Did it? (laughs) (laughs) Didn't know. Uh, Okay, I'll try to make my knot in song. Well, Um, look, I'm a man. You know, I never last as long as you'd like for it to. (laughs) It's a sex joke. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Um, hey, look, I've heard a number of people. Well, I've heard a number of people complain about like the podcast not being long enough. They're like, oh, my God, it was over. Where's the rest of it? And I'm like, yeah, you have to wait a couple of days. We'll get you another episode out shortly. <laughs> I-, I feel like that's good feedback when they're like, I want more podcasts. I'm like, bitch, we talk for 40 straight minutes. I didn't take a breath and it's not enough for you. Uh, uh, you know, Also, of note, this was a woman. Or actually, there were a few women. Uh, anyway, yeah, continue, Carol. Closing thoughts. Anyway, I mean, you, you covered a lot of the... Uh... The staying involved in activism points. Uh, I don't have a lot to add there. If you don't have an idea for how to get involved, you can DM me. And I'll give you some homework. Um, okay. I don't that, think that's. I don't think you should be inviting people to DM you. That's not going to work out the way you want. Homework, to. political oh. activism, <laughs> homework. Uh, you know. All right, give them the out, handle. Cut out. T- Cut out some, if you have any like luxury expenses, try to see if you can cut them out the next month and donate it to some, some Democrat candidates for Congress or a local election. That's my suggestion. Uh, if, otherwise do some fucking postcards and make some calls. You know, I hate making calls. So I uh, made a podcast and I'm telling you to do it instead. <laughs> yeah. Give them your, your handle on Twitter. Know, Carol, writing postcards. Don't know. I'm at, Carol Edwina. It's E D W I N E. Not at all how it is pronounced. <laughs> yeah, thank you for spelling that. Because we Carol Wine. <laughs> that's what everyone says. <laughs> Carol E Wine. Yeah, that's how I like to say it. Anyway, thank you. This all has right. been fun. It's Hi. been fantastic. Ty, do you have any closing thoughts? Um, I just want to tell everyone: get out and vote. Like, don't sit on the sidelines. This isn't the time for bickering or fighting within the party. We all have the same goals. You know, how we get there right now, who gives a fuck? Let's just get there. Well said. All right, my closing thoughts. Uh, If if anyone out there is familiar with the Washington professional football franchise, uh, formerly known as the, well, I won't say the word, and then also formerly known as the Washington football team, uh, now, currently, the Washington Commandos. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's the Washington Commanders, but I like to call oh. them the Commandos. And there's also, well, I mean, yeah. And then you can shorten it even further to the Washington Commies. But I feel like uh, that's that's a, a low blow um, to all you Washington fans out there, all three of you. Um, if you're not familiar with the owner of that organization, or that, that would be one Daniel Snyder. I won't get into some of the scandals that that he's been involved in over the last four years. You can Google that. It's worth the read. Fairly spectacular, horrifying shit. But one thing you can take away from this is that, uh, or the situation is that Daniel Snyder is holding the NFL hostage in in a way. Uh, They want to get him out. They want him to sell his team. Uh, But he's like, if I go down, you go down. It, It seems to be, some sort of scenario where he's uh, hired multiple private investigators to go around and dig up dirt on all of the other NFL franchise owners. And he's like, if I have to sell my team, okay, fine, but I'm going to put all of this out there and y'all going to lose your teams too, buddy. And a, a great parallel for this would be the Republican party. Uh, it's quite, it's quite funny how, even though Trump is no longer in office, he seems to have, put himself in a position where he's still holding them hostage. Like I, I I can't say I can't necessarily point to any evidence that he's potentially holding information over certain members of the Republican party where he's blackmailing them to keep silent or 
keep giving him their support. But you would think like someone who calls the Republican Party, the White House in both houses of Congress, that they would be like, oh, we backed a loser. Maybe we should dump this guy and move on. And they're like, no, we are tied to this motherfucker. We are all going down together on the sinking ship. It's an interesting parallel there. It's something to think about. Keep in mind. Maybe if we get to the point where these people keep losing elections, holding on to Trump, especially these midterms and possibly 2024, uh, they might turn on each other and pull a Dan Snyder and dump everyone's dirt out in the open. Something to look forward to if you vote blue. And that concludes this episode of Far in the Insurrection podcast.